we are once again <clears throat> talking about the railroad, the beginning, the beginnings of the railroad, the old Pennsylvania Railroad, when it was first built. And we're talking about the, uh, the railroad shanty towns. And if you haven't heard about the shanty towns or don't know what they are, don't feel bad. Uh, there's something that's long gone. And when they did go, the people in town or around in the township who had to deal with them were quite happy to see them go and were quite happy to forget them. Uh, they were the towns, I use the word loosely, I, you should probably call them encampments of the Irish immigrants who were building the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad in the early 1850s. And you could somewhat compare them to an army on the move because in some ways they were like that. There were a group of young men, mostly in their 20s and 30s, who had a task to do and they didn't really have a stable living environment. They had shanties to live in, pretty much. Uh, temporary living quarters that were uh, not the kind of place you want to hang out in. And since they didn't really have good living conditions, they, they were really a nuisance to have around town when they weren't working. So the people in town were not happy about their presence. They wanted a railroad, but they didn't want these guys. They were almost all Irish immigrants. And uh, we'll see them find out who they were simply because they were in Greensburg at the time when the 1850 census was taken in Greensburg and spread out <clears throat> through Hemfield Township. The other thing I might mention is also like an army on the move, there were camp followers. These were creatures who did not show up for the census. They were people who did not want to be seen. They were the ladies in the sex trade. They were the guys running the gambling houses and the uh, tippling houses. Tippling houses were the places, they were just illegal, illegal booze places where you could buy liquor uh, illegally. And the people who were the camp followers, so to speak, in the same way that an army had, usually have, had a bunch of camp followers, didn't show up for the census, but the uh, you could write a book about the events that happened in the early 1850s uh, with the uh, moving of the the people coming through building the railroad, and in some cases they weren't really all that transitory. They had to stay stay stationary for more than you know more than a year, a couple years, and right around Greensburg because the work was so demanding and so hard. Uh, but we're going to take a look at that, and I always like to see some pictures. I get very bored when I have to listen to somebody just talking to me. I like to uh, look at something that helps fill in details. So that's what the next thing we're going to do. We're going to show some pictures uh, that will help explain what I'm talking about. And uh, I'll talk about the pictures, you know, just what they mean and how, how the railroad was built and the role of the shanty towns in the uh, railroad. And I should mention that the guy that took the census, who the enumerator, would refer to them as a shanty. But what he referred to as a shanty was a whole conglomeration of them. You know, for example, McCausland shanty was on 12 acres of land. Uh, he rented that from William Jack. And the guys built their own little, uh, you know, shacks, whatever they could live in. And there was a common uh, common dining room, you know. And also, these people were not railroad employees. They were uh, hired by the contractor, who was also not a railroad employee. And we're going to take a look. Hang on. We are looking at the reason why a lot of people around Greensburg we're not too happy about uh, the railroad. Even though many of them wanted a railroad, they did not want the attendant noise and nonsense and upset that came with it. This was rioting that was going on early in 1850 up around Blairsville and points east. Uh, the guys who were building the railroad were rioting. And to the people around Greensburg, this did not 
sound like a good idea to have these guys coming to town. Uh, these were immigrant Irish who really were uh, adjusting to a new country and uh, working conditions that were in many ways inhuman. And I don't want to be seen as in any way disrespecting the Irish because I would be only speaking about my own ancestors. Uh, my mother's name was O'Hara, and back before that were, were the McManamies. But I'm one of those people who do believe in the useful past. And the past is only useful to us when we have the actual real past. Those cleaned up and prettified versions of the past are really useless. And so I, I try to talk about what actually happened. I am one of those people that believe that those who are ignorant of the past are destined to repeat it. And the only past that really we can learn from and use is the real past. This shows a section of Hempfield Township that we're going to be looking at. This is a uh, section of uh, Hempfield Township, about seven or eight miles long with Greensburg right in the middle. And the map was made only five years after the railroad was built. This is a bit cleaner version. This is coming in from Unity Township, coming down through Hempfield. This is Greensburg and Ludwig, and going out where it exits the township out around Grapeville. And here we look at Greensburg. Right in the middle was Contractor Malone. Had two sections, about a mile out this way and a mile out this way. And we uh, look at the whole extent and see how it was broken up where the shanties were located. They were, uh, there was a shanty out on this location. Uh, a contractor here was named McGrand. He had a, we had a shanty town. Contractor Malone had these two going right at Greensburg and he had two shanty towns, one up by Ludwig and one down around St. Clair Park. This was Charles McCausland who had uh, a shanty town there. And this out here were, were two contractors named uh, Snodgrass and Haymaker. And they had a shanty out here. This was out around George Station Road and where the uh, railroad went into the next township. And we look at a yet more simplified version uh, showing also the turnpike. There's still a George Station Road going up there. There's still a road that goes up to uh, Grapeville from Route 30. This was the old turnpike that preceded Route 30. And this shows where the divisions were. Divisions were about a mile long and most of them had a shanty, at least one. And I think that's all for this time. We'll have another one. And I'm going to say so long until next time. Bye-bye.